Sirmi Bodo, uh, he, she is an assistant professor at uh, JNU. Uh, I'll give the background of Dr. Sirmi Bodo. Ji. Dr. Sirmi Bodo is an assistant professor, Center for Study of Social Systems, School of Social Sciences, um, Lieutenant Associate NCC Officer, Free Delhi Girls, BN NCC JNU, associated with Vanavasi Kalyan Ashram and Center for Northeast studies on various projects uh, from a long time. Her specialization is sociology of mass communication, sociology of development. Dr. Pidmi Bodoji, over to you. Uh, thank you. I think uh, my voice is clear and audible to all of you. Uh, yes, yes, it is very clear. Uh, at the outset, I would like to give my regards to uh, the Indica itself uh, for. Uh, in fact, organizing, uh, I, I, I would rather say a need of the hour, this uh, topic itself. And uh, yes, of course, to the Indic and Nagraji, thank you so much for this uh, kind uh, uh, introductions. Uh, the topic uh, which uh, I wanted to talk to you uh, is about the, the tribals and uh, their uh, dharmic culture. Uh, uh, well, uh, the word itself, although I have kept the word tribals, uh, uh, I mean deliberately, so that I just wanted to share my views on the word itself as at the beginning uh, of this uh, symposium, uh, you know, it has been told that how this, the, uh, the term itself, the tribal has, uh, how it has been uh, used, or I would say politicized, uh, just to create a kind of uh, distortions in our mind and just to have a divisions in our mind. Uh, well, I would like to further speak on that uh, as my uh, talk will progress. Well, uh, whenever we talk about this ancient uh, India, uh, the, the ancient civilization, uh, the only existing ancient civilizations in the modern era, uh, has always been a land of continuous long traditions of wisdom and knowledge. Uh, however, all these are being plundered by various means with an agenda uh, by different foreign invasion uh, invaders, uh, which in fact led to the weakening of the foundations of these ancient knowledge traditions. And that is what we, uh, uh, why we it's become irrelevant to talk about this. Uh, uh, that today's symposium is that we have seen that how there is a diminution of power of thought, the spread of ignorance in the birthplace of this knowledge itself. Uh, in fact, after independence, uh, uh, many Western schools of thought were uh, flooded with lots of economic discourses to study this uh, society or uh, these ancient civilizations with an orientalist approach, which lead actually to the distortions and uh, misinterpretations and misrepresentations of culture and traditions and also the history of India. And, uh, uh, and because of that, uh, it becomes a challenge to have a very clear and true understanding about our own society, uh, where most textual and theoretical studies are European narrative produced uh, with their own vested interests, or I would say with their own agenda. Uh, there are predominant narratives given during those times, uh, in fact, during the British time, and even continued, although we said that we are, uh, you know, an independent country, but then again, uh, it has been uh, uh, dominated by a very uh, Western discourse, which has severely eroded our centuries old oneness. And uh, especially if we talk about uh, 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 just for the sake of your understanding, the tribal itself or this, uh, the communities of India, uh, it has been remaining a very challenging, re, uh, especially in this context. And uh, we know a space, as I come from or, or as I hail from Assam or Northeastern part of India, um, uh, some of my talk maybe will focus on that aspect. Uh, you know how it has been remained a very separatist movements among the people of that regions. And then how the alienation factor is one of the most disturbing element uh, 
uh, that you have must uh, come across or we have read about. Uh, but we, uh, but you know, this is the British policy of institutionalized segregations of uh, uh, the people living in that hilly regions, uh, snap the centuries old social, cultural, and commercial uh, 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 connectivity that exists uh, between or amongst the people. Uh, before the invasions, there existed an organic, social, and cultural, spiritual, and commercial relationships. Uh, uh, they shared similar values, uh, uh, belief systems, including the fundamentals of relations among human relations with nature, the divinity. Uh, uh, there was always had the rich social relations and, um, in fact, marital bonding uh, with not uncommon and very many. Uh, 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 brotherhood kind of feelingness or uh, they share the cultural events together economic relations between uh, uh, amongst people and that was vibrant and even the trade uh, trading relations was very complementary in nature uh, uh, but uh, the external for, for, uh, factors resulted in the separations uh, these isolations which we can uh, this long continuity cultural continuity uh, uh, it is uh, assiduously suppress the shared culture and spiritual traditions that essentially encourage the love of nature and universal divinity express and practice in indigenous shapes and forms. Uh, and this is not something which is uh, artificially created. What I'm saying right now, there is an ample evidences, recorded documents, relics, folklores, and surviving customs that show the essential togetherness uh, amongst the people of these civilizations, whether I talk about North, East, uh, or uh, Southern part, or the Western. Uh, but again, as I said at the beginning, that the pre dominant narrative given during this colonial period during the British times continued. Uh, and uh, that is the reasons behind that our neighbors, our um, friends uh, became strangers, uh, became enemies. Uh, uh, unfortunately, even after a uh, British left Indian's policy towards the uh, uh, special this uh, uh, tribal people uh, was shaped largely by the ideas and uh, 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 ideologies of some agenda-driven British anthropologists who discourage the union and uh, unifications of these great, great, uh, greatest civilizations. The tribe is often called as, uh, uh, you know, primitive, savages, uncivilized, godless. Uh, even in the media, uh, they are taken as a primitive, pre-modern, untouched by civilizations. A myth was propagated by. Uh, uh, some uh, co um, vested interest mindset academicians and uh, unfortunately by native historians also that there was no connections uh, between this tribal culture and the rest of India and they are uh, branded as a semi naked or naked people living in the jungles in the forest with no social connections uh, with the other peoples or people living in the valleys and remain excluded from the region. So such kinds of false and colonial narratives were established even in the academia and uh, inhabitants uh, uh, especially in the, among the forest regions, stereotypically uh, uh, branded as uh, nomads, barbaric, headhunters, bloodthirsty, wild savages and irreclaimable uh, savages. And it is precisely the so-called savages and uh, primitive tech that encourage the British dominations. And they are tagged as a violent people who feel proud in beheading heads of people and showcasing uh, communities uh, as if they were always in a constant war with the peoples of uh, playing or peoples of valleys. Even historians and anthropologists also try to further develop the same colonial narratives that had no civilizations of their own. It was being told that they had no knowledge about urban life and no sense of knowledge on technology uh, and no sense of governance. And therefore they met to believe uh, that colonial interventions considered to be significant changes and enlistment and good uh, for the people. Uh, in fact, the word tribe as I said at the beginning, is uh, tainted by 19th century racist ethno uh, ethnology, which uh, generally uh, describe those groups as a uh, uh, primitive, uh, belong to inferior case, a stereotype that has proved, uh, proved tenacious, especially when coupled with animism, a derogatory term that does little justice to the society itself. In any case, the notions remains uh, that such groups are marginal to mainstream uh, society well, whatever mainstream may mean. Uh, was there such a mainstream versus marginal duality in our ancient India? Uh, well, there is no word for tribe 
uh, as far as I have read in Sanskrit or in any lang Indian languages, though there are terms equivalent to forest dwellers or mountain dwellers, uh, Adivasis was coined early in the 20th centuries in the context of race obsessed colonial ethnology, which labeled every Indian community uh, uh, as uh, Aryan or non-Aryan. Uh, uh, but uh, we know that how this entire Aryan Dravidian theory itself has been debunked now. But India had no concept anyway. The uh, India had no concept of this original inhabitant. And as a sociologist, G. S. Gure uh, put it long ago that it is utterly, uh, uh, utterly, uh, uh, you know, scientific, unscientific to uh, regard uh, that uh, the some tribe or other as original owners of the soil. In fact, we uh, have a three, almost 363 communities, which is known as a Janas or jati, Jatis across map, defined in geographical, political, or ecological term. And the list of Janas rises nearly 700, uh, if we include all ancient uh, literature. And there was also a kind of uh, vested interest to establish that culture of uh, uh, um, tribals had nothing to do with the Dhami cultures of our civilizations of this country. Uh, gradually, at a later period of time, they are, you know, it has been said that they are later period, they have got converted to Hindu religion. And it was also tried to establish that the Hindu culture was imposed on them with the help of Brahmins coming, especially in the Northeast, uh, that uh, uh, they are converted uh, by the Brahmins coming from Bengal and Kannauj. And the whole idea uh, was. Uh, that uh, the, uh, these communities peripheral to Indian civilization and culture in the early centuries of Christian era, uh, which is completely based on inadequate data and unfounded suppositions. Uh, very little effort has been done so far to explore the uh, tribals or which is we call as the Janajatis for these narratives. The regions, uh, you know, always had a very progressive civilization. There was always a cordial relationships. There was a trading relationship and they just can only be possible people who have a very civilized mindset to interact with the, their neighbors uh, and with their adjacent uh, regions or uh, 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 kingdoms or uh, 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 new provinces. And there was a center of, of trade relations and cultural ex existence, which has a uh, evident uh, uh, through various documents and various archaeological uh, uh, excavations. And it, uh, the people had a very uh, uh, skilled society. They had a very progressive industrial-based society. They were involved in trading in the industrial-based products, uh, um, uh, like uh, you can say spice, uh, wire equipments, uh, woods, etc. And in addition, the, the society was has a very such a entrepreneurship in their mind, very proficient in doing uh, uh, um, uh, cordial relationship with the other uh, with their adjacent uh, communities or societies. Uh, various, uh, or, uh, apart from, uh, however, uh, you know, various external invasions pose a great challenge for the primordial traditions, faiths, and beliefs culture of these uh, so, uh, people of these communities. Uh, the conversion, especially, has done immense harm to the the, the culture, their culture, the this uh, the discontinuance of the feast of the marriage, the loss of knowledge of the wood carving as an art and means of subsistence, the replacement uh, of the rice beer, the rice wine by tea, where the negative or kind of very uh, uh, damaging. Uh, consequences that happen, the loss of traditional dormitory system, the folk literature and the value system which resulted in the breaking of their social cohesions and that solidarity. Uh, the colonial writers and anthropologists describes uh, uh, these communities as uh, tribals under different labels, like I said, animism, nature worships, and also by naming the religions of these communities after their respective name, uh, like the Kasi religions or Aunaga religions or Munda religions or a Santhal religion. Uh, this was done in fact that the British knew it fully well, that there was practically no difference between the so-called animism or tribal religions and the culture of this land. Uh, Riesle uh, wrote 
uh, almost the same thing. Uh, 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 he said that no sharp line between Hinduism and animism and uh, Hinduism is animism more or less transformed by philosophy or, a, or as a magic tempered by metaphysics. Uh, that is what he extended. Uh, and after saying this, and these observations clearly indicate that the social, cultural, and religious system of this country shows the uniformity on many levels. You might have, uh, you can see the diversity, but the root, uh, the very foundations uh, were the same. The philosophy behind is the same, which is very much uh, nature uh, centric and very sacred in nature uh, all at the same time there is are no distinctions between the popular regions of the country and the uh, general jati or the uh, uh, faith and culture even the most primitive animism is characterized by non exclusiveness non dependence on a specific revelation potential universality and is rootedness in a common experience of reality and there is no legacy of guilt associated with the first man or the first woman. Uh, uh, the, the religion is a way of life uh, the belief, uh, where social and spiritual mingle together. The sacred is not restricted to the creator alone, but even to his creations. The sacredness in traditional re, uh, religions extends to rivers, groves, and forests, and mountains also. Uh, the Adi, uh, who is the one of the community uh, from Arunachal Pradesh and some other uh, uh, community living in the state, uh, defy the sun and the moon. The creator pervades through whatever exists. Different forms of priesthood exist among different communities. The uh, and uh, and uh, all the days uh, uh, you will find a distinctiveness within their culture community, but you will find the pattern are identical. The Angamis Naga have hereditary priests. The traditions of uh, this society have formed since time immemorial of a social culture belief and practice in a very distinct way. They have their own language and much of it always is in oral form. It has morphology, phonology and semantic elements. Uh, if anyone can observe cultural dress of this community, I try to, you know, how they are traditional woven by them. Uh, they have that knowledge of uh, how uh, that chemical knowledge about the uh, color uh, when it comes to uh, making their traditional attire. Every community poses a great weaving skills, in fact, and prepared by natural dye and looming works based on silkworm of agriculture. And the preparations of traditional dresses has been done uh, always with the help of cottage-based activities. Uh, traditionally, both nature-inspired looms and looms supplied by others have been used in the productions of dress. Their ideas, customs, artifacts, values, songs, music, craft, materials, practice in social cultural life are very much influenced by geoecology in their habitat. The folk art is a remarkable repository of social cultural life, images, use of ethically prepared materials, artifacts, ethnic architecture works, musical instruments, dress, and weaving activities. So there has always been something very uh, uh, close to the nature and which always keeps binding. There has always been integrations within these kinds of differences. If you visit all their, uh, the tribal cultures of our country, the origin belief system uh, uh, you know, of human can has uh, in fact revolved around the nature worship, the sun, the moon, the rivers, mountain trees and ancestor worship. So all these patterns you can see in every form of worship of these communities. Or, and all these are important ingredients, in fact, in the perceptions of the divine. Un, uh, unfortunately, the conventional view of religion is based on the divisions of humanity into believers and non-believers, where the confess of the other is the uh, sine qua non. The, the belief system manifests in the uh, Sanatan Dharma or animism or paganism or Shintoism across the continents are what uh, uh, the tribals in India consider sacred. The, the similarities between the Hindu traditions and the tribal traditions in the fundamental polytheistic nature and the paganism uh, uh, show them clearly distinct from the uh, any kind of uh, prophetic or monotheistic religions. Both uh, 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 Hindu and the tribal traditions fail to see a conflict between the principle of unity and the principle of multiplicity. Uh, uh, they worship trees. You will find the similarities of worshiping in trees or snakes makes them equally, I think, the Hindus' enemies like the uh, tribal. And uh, significantly, the worship 
of ancestors and nature spirit makes them definitely connected with the dharmic but they are in uh, but uh, they are also in fact closer to the uh, vedic culture of this uh, country sorry uh, reincarnation is a common uh, belief uh, of both you know uh, hindus and the most tribal populations uh, 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 of this country and uh, uh, more recently in a, in a monumental study of uh, this tribal Hindu continuum, uh, there was a work uh, by Sandhya Jain which has amply demonstrated that uh, there is a strong affinity between the uh, uh, tribal concept of divinity and the Hindu dharma as evidenced in a practice mythology and a recorded history. So that the work Adi Devo Arya Devita, uh, 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 a panoramic view of tribal Hindu culture interface draws on published works of proficient anthropologists and ethnographers, sociologists, and historians to show that India's native culture and civilization has grown up on a common substratum which does not easily yield to artificial divisions. Uh, the tribal elements itself can be traced to the very core of the dharma, dharma or the belief of the civilizations. Uh, 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 Sashiva and Vishnu, two of the greatest gods of this Hindu pantheon, exhibit strong traces of our tribal uh, origins. Tribal belt to this day is dotted with a temple dedicated to Shiva and Shakti, both uh, closely linked with the uh, uh, tantra and magic, which are widely practiced in all uh, uh, tribal communities. There, uh, a renowned anthropologist by the name Robert Redfield uh, said once that the most important conclusions of anthropological studies of uh, Hinduism is that the unity of Hinduism does not reside exclusively in an exemplary set of norms and scripture or an alternative lower level popular Hinduism of the un uncultivated masses. The unity is to be found rather in the continuities that can be traced in a concrete media of songs, dance, play, a sculpture, painting, religious stories, festivals, rites that connect the rituals and beliefs of the villagers with those of the townsmen and urbanites, one region with the other, and educated with the uneducated. And uh, in fact, this country is a huge conglomerate of traditions that the colonial experience as uh, 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 Hinduism. And there's so many practices, rituals, sampradays, parampara, guru, philosophies, and such, which they united into an overarching meta narrative of the religions of Hinduism. And later, uh, other religions uh, you know, come into picture, like uh, Sikhism, Buddhism, or Jainism, and so on. And many times, allegedly, uh, uh, revolting against the main, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, by the other oppressive uh, dominations of the, in this society. Uh, but this an experience of unity for the colonials who were trying to make sense of actually Indian culture and their own culture generated with a strong idea uh, that uh, religion is a culture universal. A culture without religions was unimaginable for them. And our social sciences have really colonized and never questioned this uh, uh, you know, uh, colonial understanding. Uh, there was a Belgian scholar by the name Armand Neven who set out to study the mutual influence of uh, tribal culture and Hindu culture, but gave up the project to get all together uh, when he found out uh, that no fundamental distinctions could be made between the two and that they were essentially the same. But the problem is that the, uh, 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 we have never tried to understand or we have never tried to see or observe um, or perceive our own traditions or our, our, I would say our own culture uh, from our uh, point of view or uh, Indian centric point of view, I would say uh, we are such a uh, blindfolded or we are using such a, a uh, uh, or maybe we have such a high opinion it or have a very low uh, or um, so uh, self uh, low esteem when it comes to our own perspective or on our own philosophy that we never made an attempt and as i said that in our academia we have never questioned those colonial understanding maybe we don't even know how to have this our own perspective and this is the high time that through these kinds of discussions or to, through this kind of academic discourse we should uh you know try to explore uh, that area because the time is very conducive as i seen uh, and then we have the scripture we have all the uh, no required materials all the evidences thus we need a very uh, uh 
you know, proper uh, um, uh, observations, a proper gauge, or maybe say the local gauge to understand our own uh, community, which is always being a continuity. It's like a river, it's, it keeps flowing and we have to somewhere bring uh, those uh, connected and we have to meet, we have all the dots, but we have to connect the, uh, those dots. You know, it is says that the chief cause uh, of the weakness of India or the kind of challenges we are, uh, facing in our country is not the subjections nor, nor poverty, nor the lack of spirituality or the dharma or ethics, but, uh, but this declining of thought power, the growth of ignorance in, a, in this very motherland of knowledge, inability or unwillingness to think, thought incapacity or thought phobia. The modern world is the age of the victory of knowledge. I mean, whoever thinks most seeks most labor or most can fathom and learn the truth of the world and get so much more shakti. If you just look at the Europe, you know, a vast sea of thought and the play of a huge and fast moving and yet disciplined force. The whole shakti of Europe is in that. And in the strength of the Shakti, it has been swallowing up the entire world. In Europe, they want the deep thought, the deep word. There even an ordinary laborer or artisan thing wants to know, is not satisfied with surface things, but wants to go behind. But there is still these differences. There is a fatal limitations in the strength and the thought of Europe. When it comes to the spiritual field, it is a thought power can no longer move ahead. Their Europe sees everything as a riddle, nebulous metaphysics or yogic hallucination. They rub their eyes as, as in smoke and can see nothing clear. We already have that spiritual sense. We owe it to our forefathers. And whoever has that sense has at his disposal, disposal such knowledge and shakti as with one breath might blow away all the huge powers of Europe like the blade of grass. But to get the shakti, one must be a worshiper, a must believer of that. And uh, we, but unfortunately, we become the worshiper of the easy way or short way. Our forefathers divided into a sea of vast thought and gain a vast knowledge and established a mighty civilizations. And I think through these kinds of uh, research, which uh, with a very unbiased uh, uh, perspective towards our own society can have an actual uh, what you call um, uh, to thoughts uh, or our own Indian perspective uh, so that uh, we can actually can get rid of uh, from all these distortions that has been created uh, through uh, uh, in academia, uh, in our uh, public discourses. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe this is a beginning and uh, well, I mean, uh, I am very hopeful uh, that uh, at least we have started this kind of discussions. And I, again, at the end, uh, I would like to thank to the organizers uh, for conducting such kind of relevant topic uh, and make it more exclusive in nature. So thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you very much, uh, Firmiji. Uh, that was an excellent, uh, highly uh, theoretical and analytical uh, exposition of uh, the dharmic uh, aspects of uh, our culture. Particularly, you have been constantly focusing on the decolonization uh, aspect of our understanding of the forest dwelling communities. Uh, repeatedly, you mentioned how colonization has led to a totally different understanding of the forest dwelling uh, communities. And uh, you have been repeatedly showing how uh, the unity among all the cultures of India, including the forest dwelling ones, is very important. And uh, you focused on how the word tribe itself is a uh, product of colonization uh, in India. And uh, thank you very much for uh, your exposition. Let us check if there are questions. Uh, is it true that uh, the wide literature claiming that Indian civilization is only about 5,000 years old comes from a Roman Catholic compulsion to start everything from 3,102 BC? As a, a father of a tiny toddler, how does one try and educate the child about our tribes without getting lost into too much information overload? Tourism doesn't seem to be an answer for multiple reasons. And another question is, Namaste, Namaste, Madam. How does the conversion missionary activity impact the Vanavasis? Can you share any references of research studies done on this aspect of Vanavasi culture? Okay, uh, I think uh, these are the questions, right, uh, Nagranji? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 
uh, yeah, it, it, in the question and answer box, there is a question and answer box. So Q and A. If you click on that, you get those questions. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now I can see those questions. Yes. Uh, the first question uh, is about yeah. the history. You may skip that question. But mm -hmm. there is uh, one more question which is probably relevant. How to uh, teach youngsters about our uh, forest dwelling cultures? And another question is about uh, missionary activity. Is there any research? Oh, yeah, I okay, I, I got that. Uh, first, I would like to answer to the Aniket who asked, like, how does one try and educate the child about our own tribe without getting lost into too much information overload? Yes, I mean, yes, we are uh, <laughs> these days we are overloaded with too much information. We have social media, internet available everywhere. Uh, but uh, see, these kinds of uh, but, I mean, in the sea of this too much of information, in, uh, I think the one way is to have uh, to have a proper research to set up and, uh, uh, you know, people like, for me, example, if you can ask me, that is what my endeavor, one of the endeavor that I wanted to continue in my life, that to get the correct uh, uh, understanding about our own community and to have the proper knowledge so that we don't no longer, we no longer feel inferior or complex, uh, uh, you know, uh, inferior complexity when it comes to our own society. It's not only happen with the tribals, it only, uh, it uh, happens with every Indians uh, actually, that how we feel uh, or how we don't even know much about our own traditions or our own culture. Uh, so I feel that uh, if we uh, start uh, having own research, uh, we have to follow certain books. We have to depend on uh, many folklore, folk songs. If we can start recording, I would suggest, uh, Anike, that if you start recording those, you know, you must have some elderly people who have that memories in our, uh, in their mind. But, you know, because of this modern education system, now we are also sidelining our oral culture, our oral history, our folk traditions, our uh, oral custom, uh, our own customs and rituals. So please, if you can keep record all these things and through our research, through our discussions, we can preserve and we can educate our own uh, children. And that is uh, will happen only from our each, if you each one of us start trying from day one I, or from maybe I would say from today. And yes, of course, tourism doesn't seem to be an answer for multiple reasons, but uh, some way it can at least make us uh, aware about lots of things. So every dimensions did play a very important role. So I could not sideline any aspect of it. And to the Subhash Yadav questions that how does conversions missionary activities impact the Vanavasis? As I said uh, in my talk itself, this, this conversion has actually uh, impacted the very what you call the foundation, the very foundations, the very belief system of Vanavasis. You wanted any reference uh, of research studies? Well, one research which I have conducted myself, I would like to give a share with you. There is a community called Vancho community in Arunachal Pradesh, where I actually uh, had the, I, I done, I think two, three years before, uh, um, I mean, on the, uh, on the social cultural life of the Vancho community. And I found that 99.9% .9 of the community converted to Christianity. And when I asked, uh, visited their house, they have a, you know, this society has followed a, um, the chieftaincy uh, 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 system. I mean, they still follow, the, they still believe in their traditional pattern. I mean, some of them are still, you know, practiced by these people. So there was very few household where they have not uh, con converted and they retain their own identity, their own culture. So I asked him, like, what is your uh, traditional or belief system or what is a traditional ritual ceremony uh, uh, you know in our uh, in your social day-to-day -day life so sh sh that person was completely in a confused state he doesn't know how to answer my question so he was a bit of skeptical at the same time about their own roots so what he told me is that which I wanted to share with you uh, is that uh, I am very, you know, um, much in a, what you call the, in a very uh, 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 apprehensive about my own cultures, like how to preserve all this because we have lost everything. All those traditional uh, sacredness, that symbol they used to have at their home, the, you know, which has been thrown away. 
by the people who actually came for the in the name of uh, you know uh, upliftment their life you know they have just converted their mind they have converted their entire ritual traditions now everything is very is very only uh, available with a very symbolic way there they have lost their philosophy gradually so he this person who was very i think at the age of 50 he was very apprehensive that how we can uh, uh, you know uh, preserve all those traditions because we don't know anymore uh, that what was our original uh, traditional system what was our traditional social system uh, how we used to perform in a ceremony so this itself has given me that how this conversion actually uh, destroying or damaging the indigenous culture uh, or the very original culture of every Vanuasi. And this is the one example I'm sharing with you. But if you visit uh, other uh, you know, societies or other Vanuasi or Janajatis, you will see the same kind of experiences. So I think I have uh, ans made, I mean, I have given uh, uh, I re responded uh, to the Subhash Yadav. I think he's uh, uh, satisfied with my answer. And if you want to know more about it, I, I think my email uh, is always be available for all kinds of connectivity. So uh, I would like to be in touch if you really want to have a serious work on this aspect. So yeah, thank you. So Manaspati Garu wants to speak. Uh... Thank you. That was a very wonderful presentation, uh, Professor. Uh, I just wanted to know how much of uh, the sacred mythologies and uh, historical narratives, you must be having bards, no, for your communities, the Bodos, singers, uh, who, uh, tell, who tell uh, your Rebi, sir, I am not from Bodo community, I'm from Dimasa uh, community. Yeah. All right, all right, yeah, yeah. but, but uh, many communities uh, in that area must be having, still having their bards. How much of the uh, traditional folklore or mythologies or sacred literature has been documented and how much remains to be done uh, in, in your area? Uh, well, if I talk about my area, uh, well, there are lots of uh, uh, research that has been going on. Even I myself is uh, uh, trying to collect all those documents. And as I said, that I'm trying to uh, getting those recorded versions uh, you know, uh, from all the elderly people who has still have these memories in their mind about the folk culture and about their traditions. So this is the something which is ongoing work that is happening, but yeah, happening. But there are again, another set of people, uh, uh, you know, who are trying to preserve those uh, knowledge and culture, but then again, with a very you know, separated mindset. So the, the narrative is itself, I find very problematic. We is no dirt of knowledge. There is no dirt of information, but the narrations that the approach is something which is more challenging than anything. Yeah. There is one question from Aditi Ji. Uh, so do these uh, Vanavasi groups consider themselves as uh, different imports caste? Uh, do they use uh, the term after conversion or even prior? Or how do they identify themselves? Uh, they, do they identify themselves as Hindu groups or non-Hindu groups? Or what is their own self-identification? How do they identify themselves? You can ask Aditi. I mean, I myself come from that group, right? So I think my also talk give you another, uh, I, I think somewhere partially I've answered to your questions, how I see myself, whatever I said today is something at the replica of some uh, people of my community or I myself, what I've experienced throughout. It's a self give. See, uh, uh, about you said about like, uh, the uh, so do these Vanvasi groups consider themselves as different castes? They have, See, this caste, do not please, you know, stick to this caste, race, religion. This is what our model, um, uh, you know, uh, modern social thinker has turned up to. Whenever, when, whenever we try to understand our Indian society, all they understood is caste, race, and religions. But we haven't studied it as a very social cultural point of view. We never studied in a civilization point of view. So the very narrative itself. Uh, it's a very challenging, it's, itself is a very confusing. But if you ask me, I would say that I uh, come from a Dimasa community, which has a long traditions of dynasty, which is a long traditions of ruling that part of, uh, 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 you know, India. Uh, uh, but I think uh, I would like to share uh, one of the once a capital of the Masa Kingdom is the Dimapur. It's a ruined now city. It used to be a city at that point of time, talking about the 12th okay. century. So we see our society in a very developed society, uh, not as a stick to any, uh, you know, caste, religion and class, but yeah, the social system, the framework, which is a clan based, we have a clan system. 
uh, I think uh, this is only I can say right now. Uh, to Aditi, I hope that I have responded to your question. Uh, 